Hi everyone. Uh, like many of you with quarantine, we have a little extra time on our hands. So I thought maybe uh, running a little experiment and the experiment goes something like this. Uh, when I released Two Californias, I thought that I would write a bunch of blog posts that kind of gave information on the storytelling, on things I was thinking about, a little bit of autobiography, a lot of bit of cultural information. Uh, but now what I think I'm going to do, at least today, is read the shortest story in the collection, KS, and then put on screen a couple tidbits or factoids of info that uh, might be useful in just opening up the story a little bit more. It's a historical story insofar as that it's uh, set in 1993, and that point in time is important, so extra info seems helpful. I'm in my lovely office. And I've got my um, much beloved Waylon Yutani sweater on or hoodie, building better worlds, worlds, words and worlds. And um, I guess it makes me feel a little bit better about things. Um, so this is KS. Dizzy peels back the shoulder of his Angora sweater, revealing a red purple patch of skin to RJ, who is sipping the last of his Coke from an Arby's cup. Media's viral darling, quips Dizzy, in the flesh. It's 1993. This year's signifiers, the lesion, a sand-haired boy begging research money from Congress. In the boy's suit pocket, a small plastic monkey, an anti-anxiety charm. Dizzy calls this first one his imaginary friend. No better evidence of bodily decomposition, ethical turpitude. Scored like a sewer grate, like a barbecue burn, open as a mouth. I'm like so popular, he says, valley girl style. RJ listens to himself, sucking up air with a straw. Even a closed mouth smile would humor Dizzy. To show shock would be to harden what need not calcify. Dizzy's been asymptomatic for a long time. The straw hits an ice cube, and RJ thinks about the word calving, and Dizzy laughs, though the joke has long since trailed away. A few days later, with the first still in what Dizzy calls royal thrush, the second appears. Dizzy draws a five-pointed star around it. To prove his good health, he touches his toes, calls Seville to schedule his work weekly Turkish lesson. Once there, he makes her teach him nothing but spices. As RJ prepares for an anti-date with Misha, carefully guiding the razor around his short sideburns, Dizzy cuts band-aids into script strips, applies them like jail bars to the sarcoma. What are you doing? asks RJ. If one gets in your liver, replies Dizzy, it probably is colorless, don't you think? RJ says, I think tomorrow, I'll make us pancakes, like you're coming home tonight. Of course I'm coming home, says RJ. That's his plan, to stay close. You're never coming home, you breeder, says Dizzy. Watching Dizzy trace the lesion's scabby ridges, RJ says, you know, we still have blueberries. Excuse me, says Dizzy, I'm reviewing now. The word for time is kick. cardamom is kakula. We're lucky, says RJ. It's so late in the season for blueberries. Dizzy yells, stop making everything all nice nice. RJ flops belly down onto the bed. Whatever, he says. His fingernails need trimming. I'll tell you a story, RJ says the following evening, after Dizzy comes home, tipsy and self-satisfied, having seduced a boy with fragile wrists at a black-lit bar. Aside from a compulsory hug that morning, RJ and Dizzy have not spoken. What to say? Only that the world is big. K.S. begins RJ, stands for Kirk Spock. What about him? They're gay. Cool, says Dizzy. The apartment smells of microwaved popcorn. While Dizzy gathers up the few remaining kernels from the blown open bag, RJ describes the illegal underground novels that elaborate juicily upon Kirk and Spock's love affair. Do you remember the one with the deadly flying amoeba? Asks Dizzy. 
They look like my imaginary friends here. He taps his shoulder. And equally evil. Not evil, says RJ. Just misunderstood. Not evil? Until the end, says RJ. Kirk and Spock couldn't figure out that they were simply starving. <laughs>